So, I had a person come in, she came in, it was probably a Monday, and she said, Lane, I overdosed this weekend. That was the action or that was the target behavior, overdosing on medication. So usually the easiest place to start with is what set it off? What prompted it? What was the triggering event? You, know, you can use different variations of, of that question. And she said, I made dinner and I called my family to the dinner table and they didn't show up. And then I went into my room and I overdosed. Okay, well there's more to this story, right? than just the family not showing up and then the overdose. So you can start to kind of stretch out what's happening between the prompting event and the behavior, or you could go to vulnerabilities, or you could go to consequences. There are lots of ways of putting together a puzzle. The important thing is that you have the picture when you're done. Okay. In this particular situation, I went back to vulnerabilities, and I said something like, well, if your family's like mine, there are other days when they don't listen to you where you're not overdosing. What made you more vulnerable on that day to respond or to react with an overdose um, rather than just shrugging it off? And she said, I didn't sleep well the night before, and I didn't take my medications that morning, and my husband and I had a fight during the afternoon. So she identified those vulnerabilities. Now, if you had the time and the inclination, I mean, you could chain off in a different direction there. Well, tell me more about this fight with your husband. You know, what happened and what were you feeling and what were you thinking about that? You know, and you may, you know, put some of those links in there. I mean, the fight with the husband's an important event during the day. I had a certain amount of time to deal with. So I, in this particular situation, I didn't chain off in that direction. I wanted to, you know, stay with the overdose and what she identified as the prompting event and try to figure out what was happening between there and try to get to consequences. So, you know, you have to work with the time you've got and that sort of thing. But we identified a few important vulnerabilities. You know, if you don't sleep very well, you're more vulnerable. You know, her medications were pretty important to regulating and managing her symptoms. And of course, the event with the husband during the afternoon. She's already not feeling very well. I said, when you're there at the table, you called people, they didn't show up. And sometimes you can ask clients to do this. Just kind of close your eyes and visualize that moment again. Sometimes that helps people identify. I said, you know, what did you notice with your feelings? What happened with your feelings right at that time? And she kind of tightened up and she said, I was real angry. Okay. So you're feeling really angry. And I said, sometimes when people are feeling angry or another emotion, there's something underneath that emotion too. And was there anything else happening with your emotions? And then she started to soften up and she started to tear up a little bit. And she said, sad and hopeless. And she said, Sometimes I feel like I'm a lousy mom, and sometimes I feel like I have a lousy family, and sometimes I feel like nothing's going to change. And the first thing I did was I moved in with some validation, and I said, I can see that this is really painful to experience right now, just like it was then. And I can see the tears, and I know that this is really hard in this moment. And then I moved in with some encouragement, but you're doing a great job and we're going to get something out of this. I promise we'll get something out of this. And you identified some important thoughts happening too, some judgments. Lousy mom, lousy family, things may not change. And so certainly if that thinking was happening during that time, I mean that's kind of fueling the fire with the emotions, right? They're kind of fueling each other. She agreed that that was happening. I said, you know, was there a moment of choice where you thought, I'm going to go to my bedroom and take this overdose versus pulling out your safety plan or trying something different? And she said, no, I, I didn't really notice that. It just, seemed to, it just seemed to happen. Okay. So I was kind of trying to get at this action urge sort of thing. You know, was there that fork in the road? 
where you decide either you're going to get into this, this uh, target behavior or you're going to try something else. And sometimes people notice that moment of choice and they make their choice one way or the other anyway, and sometimes people don't notice that. If someone doesn't notice it, that's okay. You're still going to have a picture when you're done. So I said, okay, so you, so you went and you overdosed in your room. I said, then what happened? What happened next? And she said, well, I came out almost right away and I told my husband that I had taken all of my pills. And I said, taking the pills obviously wasn't very skillful, but I'm really glad that you said something about it. I said, you know, sometimes people just will do something like that and wait to be found and that can end up in a tragedy. Not, I'm not happy that you took the meds, but I'm happy that you, that you did that. Okay, now this is also giving me a hypothesis about why she did it. Did she likely take all of those meds because she really intended to die? Probably not. You know, there's something else going on there. Okay, she's trying to communicate something. And I, so I held on to that hypothesis. Okay, I just put it in the back of my mind and I, and I kind of carried on with the behavioral analysis. And I said, okay, you told your husband, what happened next? And she said, he drove me to the hospital and they pumped my stomach and that was really unpleasant. And they held me for a number of hours and I had to talk to a hospital social worker. And eventually they decided that I was safe to go home and so they sent me home with my husband. He is real angry at me and I was feeling really shameful about it. And she said, I know there's going to be a big hospital copay that I'm not sure we can afford. And she said, you've probably lost some trust in me. And she said, and I have to do this chain analysis. They say that not infrequently. <laughs> They'll say that that is one of the consequences, okay? So now we've got a pretty good picture of what's happened. You know, at this point, she and I have probably spent about half of our you know, time together, the time we have to do this type of work, about half of our time together getting this uh, established. So I want to start getting some skills in there so she sees some benefit to why we're doing this in the first place. 